Terry Klopfenstein, uh, been at the university for 53 years. Uh, this is an interesting topic uh, 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 about corn silage because when I came, we used a lot of corn silage and then it kind of changed and then with the advent of uh, distillers grains from the ethanol industry, uh, we, we got away a, a bit from corn silage, but then seven, eight years ago, we thought, well, we may be missing something here. So we've really gotten involved. Well, the biology of the corn silage is really important. You've got to know about the biology. But what's important to a producer then is not just the biology, but the economics. And so I got the task of, of looking at the economics of corn silage. First, there are about three things that are really important to the economics that I think are puzzling to most people. The first one is how to price the corn grain in the field. That's how silage gets priced. What's the value of the corn grain in the field? Because that's the alternative for the corn plant. And that's the way we price corn silage. That's the way it's been done. The problem is pricing the corn back in the field. And for a corn producer, they want to price it when the price of corn is fairly high. When is that? That's in the that's in the uh, in the spring okay so this figure shows what happens to corn price from harvest time into the spring and summer okay it increases 40 or 50 cents a bushel the next slide shows what the storage cost is if you harvest corn put it into storage it costs money I mean, storage cost is significant, whether it's commercial storage or whether it's on-farm storage. This slide from Iowa State, both of these from Iowa State, showing what happens to storage cost. And of course, right when you put it in, there's a cost to putting it in and the facility and so on, whether it stays in there a day or whether it stays in there 365 days, you've got that, that facility. I like to simplify, so I've simplified and said, the increase in the price of corn from fall to spring is roughly equivalent to the cost of storage. Okay, so when we price corn in the field, we need to price it on the basis of what it is in the fall because if you're cutting silage, you're paying for the storage. It doesn't have to be paid by the corn producer. Okay, so this is a really important point. It should be priced on the basis of the price of corn in the fall at harvest time, not what it is in the spring. And that's a difference of around uh, 40 cents a bushel. Then if you go through all of the steps to price the silage in the field, the cost of harvesting the corn to get it back to what its value is in the field and then the cost of harvesting silage, putting it in the silo and packing and so on. The other issue that I want to point out has to do with adding the nutrients back to the field because the corn producer says if you take corn silage off you're taking more nutrients off in that forage than you would if you were just harvesting corn grain that's already accounted for so usually the silage is priced a little higher to account for those nutrients that need to be added back primarily nitrogen and phosphorus in Nebraska my point is that when we feed this silage the cattle produce manure if we haul that manure back on the field uh, it returns those nutrients and therefore those nutrients should be accounted for. In addition, Rick Kelsch has pointed out these benefits to uh, 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 using manure back on the field where we've cut silage. And uh, so increased yields, et cetera, et cetera, more microbial uh, activity in the soil, those kinds of things. So there's some real advantages to account for that manure. Again, it's important that the cattle feeder and the corn producer work together to account for this manure that can be hauled back to the field. Finally, now to get to the economics of, of what the, uh, the value of the silage is in the feedlot situation. We've done several experiments, especially looking at about 45% silage. Typically, a finishing diet in our feedlots would have the 15% corn silage. As just as a roughage source and quality wouldn't be that big a deal. Okay, it's just there's roughage even though it's half grain. 45% uh, is replacing essentially half of the corn in the diet. 
corn or combination corn and, and byproduct. Uh, obviously, uh, as I mentioned, byproducts, byproducts and the use of byproducts has changed this a lot. And so having the distiller's grains in the diet or a gluten feed makes the silage work better, but I won't go into that further. So this is an experiment uh, where the cattle were finished to the same endpoint, uh, and and it shows the economics of of the advantage of using 45% silage compared to a control that's just 15% silage, and you can see that that there's a tremendous economic advantage to using the corn silage. That's if it's done right. That means getting this corn priced correctly back in the field, hauling the manure back onto that field that the corn silage was harvested from, and then minimizing silage shrink in the silo. When those three things are done well, there's quite an economic advantage, as shown in this slide, quite an economic advantage to feeding higher levels of silage. The cattle are, are fed a little longer because they don't gain quite as fast. They're somewhat less efficient, and so if, if efficiency is the only goal, then this doesn't work. But if economic efficiency is the goal, then there is a real potential for using corn silage in our finishing diets if all of these things are done correctly.